The Corsair H150i Pro RGB is regarded as the best of the best when it comes to AIO cooling. Well, Be Quiet think that they haven't beat with the Silent Loop 2. And of course, they've added some RGB, so you know it's gonna be good, right? Let's do this. With its luxurious curves, the AOC Aegon AG353 UCG is not just a pretty picture. Featuring a wide quad HDR1000 display at 200Hz and G-Sync Ultimate, you too can game your way to victory. Check the link in the description to find out more. So let's start by having a little history lesson. Be Quiet's first attempt was the original Silent Loop, and well, it kind of sucked. But it was their first attempt, so we'll give them that. It was a fairly simple design, but sadly the pump wasn't exactly great, and it was renowned for being, well, frankly loud. In fact, I had one fail on me when it started making a weird kind of gurgling noise. But in its defense, I had similar with Corsair's Hydros and had a couple of H80s fail on me as well. Fast forward in a bit and Be Quiet came out with the Pure Loop, which was aimed at the more price savvy and came with Pure Wings 2 PWM high-speed fans, which operated at 1600 RPM. So I guess they were a little bit noisier, but they also pushed through more airflow. So it was definitely kind of a step in the right direction. Now the new Silent Loop 2, that takes it one step further again and comes with a more powerful pump, improved cold plate and 120 mm high-speed Silent Wings 3 fans that ramp up to 2200 RPM. If you're going for the 280mm model, then it comes with 140mm high-speed Silent Wings 3 fans, which are, again, PWM, and they only go up to 1600 RPM. Now, with the Silent Loop 2, it comes in four sizes, and we put the price in on the screen just so you can see exactly how it compares against, I guess, other things in the market from the likes of, say, Corsair or any other brand out there. So on paper, it looks good, and price-wise, comes in cheaper than the market-leading H150i Pro RGB that we're gonna be testing it against. Now, before we actually take a look at the unit itself, one key thing that the Silent Loop 2 has is the option to top it up. So many people don't actually know AIOs are technically a perishable item, meaning coolant will evaporate over time. So having the ability to top things up is actually a good thing and is likely the main issue the original Silent Loop had, which led to the pump running dry and then consequently being noisy. Now the top up point is actually on the end of the radiator. So filling up should be nice and easy, even for novice users. But depending on the placement of the rad inside your case, it may be a bit awkward getting to that fill port. Another big thing is that the Silent Loop 2 now has RGB. While it might not sound like a big thing, Be Quiet haven't really done much with RGB. Just a CPU block featuring a small amount of RGB, which can be controlled through the motherboard or by using the included controller, which is powered by SATA, which is nice. And in all honesty, um, it's not the easiest and most user-friendly, but more on that in a little bit. So the RAD is your typical copper nickel plating affair and across all sizes comes in at 27 mil thick. So it's on par with the likes of the H150i Pro RGB from Corsair. Though the tubes on this are actually a little bit longer at 40 centimeters compared to 35 centimeters on the Corsair. They've also gone with the same style hoses as the Pure Loop instead of the kind of horrible rubbery anti-kink ones that were on the original Silent Loop that kind of had a weird coil around them and they just looked awful and cheap. Compared to the Pure Loop, you'll also see that the pump is back inside the main CPU block again, whereas the Pure Loop has it kind of in line in the hoses, which I honestly didn't like it. It just looks a bit like an afterthought, whereas this looks much, much cleaner. It does mean, however, that due to the most retarded patent in history from Acertech, that this won't actually be available to buy in the US. So if you are watching this from the US, uh, I, I guess, yeah, I wish you well, and I will see you in the next video. For those outside of the US, let's carry on. So sticking with the head, it's got the same kind of brush look that the Pure Loop has, but it's definitely kind of beefed up in comparison. The logo isn't huge and it just kind of has a, I don't know, like a premium look and a feel to it. Considering the pump is inside, it's still a relatively small block. And the pump features a three chamber design, which Be Quiet say gives superior cooling and whisper quiet operation. So I guess they're aware of kind of the shortfalls they had with the original Silent Loop. Another thing Be Quiet claimed to have done is improved on the cold plate with a high density stack of fins and a larger surface area. This means it's gonna be perfect for both AMD and Intel on both consumer and HEDT platforms like X299 and Threadripper. 
Though it is worth noting the TR4 mounting kit is sold separately, but it's good to know that it can deal with those larger CPUs and of course, the higher heat demands that they have. So the fans, they are the best of the best from Be Quiet and are the high speed Silent Wings 3 fans, which are PWM and have a max RPM of 2200. So in theory, they are gonna be louder than the competition at 28.6 decibels. For clarity, we tested it against the Corsair H150i Pro RGB, which has ML series fans with a max noise level of 25 decibels at 1600 RPM. Obviously you can get around this by setting custom fan profiles or curves depending on your needs and tweaking things specifically, you know, for you inside the BIOS or of course your software of choice. Now, in terms of installation, this is where things get a little bit interesting because, well, it's a biggie. Be Quiet have always been regarded as kind of being more complicated than they need to be. Luckily, they are actually getting better and this does show. And while the instructions themselves are, I guess, fairly clear, it could be better with the diagrams for novice users. Overall though, installation was pretty simple and once installed and turned on, well, we need to talk about that all important thing, the addressable RGB. How does the CPU block actually look? Well, there's a big divide when it comes to RGB and with so many colors to choose from, it's just easier if we just roll a montage. Let's do it. So with RGB, or more importantly, addressable RGB, most modern motherboards come with uh, one or more headers, which will cover, I guess, most people. Others may want to use it manually or simply have older hardware that doesn't have the connectivity for it. And while it's a valiant effort, yeah, this, it's not exactly perfect from Be Quiet. Changing the color alone isn't the simplest of tasks. And luckily the manual does explain it, but does it really need explaining? I mean, it shouldn't do. You know what men are like, we don't really, well, we don't do manuals. They're more like kind of reference or guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. So design and functionality to one side, it's all about how it performs, both for temperatures and acoustics. And as mentioned, the market leader when it comes to popularity is Corsair. So we wanted to see exactly how it compared to the H150i Pro RGB. I mean, they're both 360 mil AIOs. They have similar length hoses, similar thickness rads. So are pretty much even when it comes to doing a comparison. So how did the Be Quiet do? Is it the new AIO king? So to start, we used an 11900K because yes, it gets warmer than the competition. And at idle, which was taken after five minutes to allow our CPU to stabilize, the Be Quiet and Corsair were basically neck and neck. If you wanted to, you could argue that margin of error comes into play. So I guess you could, could technically class it as a draw. Now, when it comes to gaming, the Be Quiet came out on top by four degrees. So not a huge amount, but enough. And that's while running Unigen Superposition for about 10 minutes at 54 degrees on the Be Quiet, while the Corsair came in at 58 degrees. So far, so good for the Silent Loop too. I guess those fans are, I don't know, maybe making a difference, but we do need to obviously look at acoustics shortly too. Now, when it came to pure load, we used Prime 95 for 10 minutes, and this is where the results drew a little bit closer between the two AIOs, with a one degree difference in favor of the Corsair at 89 degrees to the Be Quiet at 90 degrees. Again, you could argue margin of error and retesting could see an even draw or even a degree in either direction. This could come out on top and this come below. So we know the results are close, but the Be Quiet has Corsair pegged when it comes to gaming by around 7% but we also know that the fans on the Be Quiet spin faster. So I guess you'd expect that, but what difference does that actually make when it comes to noise? As you'd expect, well, the Be Quiet fans are gonna be a lot louder, right? Well, at idle, again, they're actually evenly matched, seeing the Be Quiet come in slightly quieter at 41.2 decibels compared to the 42.9 decibels on the H150i Pro RGB. In gaming, the Be Quiet still beat the Corsair, though only by less than half a decibel. So again, margin of error. And at load, we're seeing the Corsair beating the Silent Loop 2 by less than one decibel. So pretty damn close. So what can we take away from all of this? Well, for the most part at idle and at load in terms of temperatures and acoustics, they are nigh on identical. 
if we give tolerances of plus or minus one decibel, and the same with degrees. During gaming, the Be Quiet stayed similar to the Corsair in terms of noise, but it was four degrees cooler in our testing during a 10 minute run. So does that mean the Be Quiet is now the new AIO King? I mean, what else really differentiates these? Performance wise, Nothing. The results are the results, and in black and white, the Be Quiet could be argued as the better, especially with the better result in gaming, and the other results, I guess, really being too close to call. Maybe we'll end up testing this again on a HEDT platform to see kind of how they both compare with, I guess, higher heat sources. So performance aside, the other area to look at is, of course, styling, and the freshly added RGB that Be Quiet are now incorporating. Comparing again to the Corsair, you could argue that the Silent Loop 2 is a bit more subtle and the look is a bit more premium with the brushed metal effect instead of kind of straight up plastic. It's a, it's a tricky one. But the last thing you do have to look at is price. How does it compare? Well, the Corsair H150i Pro RGB at the time of filming is sold on Corsair's website and other retailers for $162.99. Whereas the Silent Loop 2 360mm comes in at £134.99 MSRP. So by all accounts, this is a clear winner for the Be Quiet, providing that retailers actually hit the MSRP pricing, which based on GPUs, that just never happens. We've actually seen that CCO Online in the UK have listed it at £142.87p. So it's above MSRP, but it's still £20 cheaper than the H150i Pro RGB. So in my eyes, I mean, it's a clear winner. I'll admit I was dubious going into this, knowing that the fans spin faster, but in our tests, it either compares to the Corsair or it beats it. And though the difference at load in terms of acoustics was, I guess, about the same, the 2200 RPM fans and the frequency of the pump was definitely audible to me. So I guess it kind of loses in that respect. This is likely down to the frequency of the noise instead of the actual loudness level. Is it something I'd worry about? No, probably not, especially when I'd be saving 20 to 30 pounds. That kind of stuff just wouldn't bother me, especially when you're talking gaming, you're more likely gonna have your speakers on or you're gonna have a headset on, so you're never actually going to hear it. And remember, when we did them kind of tests, it's, you know, I don't know, a worst case scenario kind of test, which 99% of consumers just simply won't be doing. So summing up, it finally seems like Be Quiet have made a decent AIO that can compete with the market leader, though it does fall short in one area, and this needs to be addressed. It only comes with a three-year warranty, compared to Corsair's five-year. And now, even Arctic, they have a seven-year warranty. What they, well, they actually recently changed that due to consumer demand. So hopefully that's something that Be Quiet can look at changing too. Let me know in the comments section below, would the kind of shorter warranty put you off for superior performance? Is the extra 20 pounds worth an extra two years? And now we've added RGB. I mean, does that just make this a more desirable product? I know my answer. Let me know yours. If you enjoyed this video, you know exactly what to do. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. It helps so much that you wouldn't even believe. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay like guys, bye-bye.